In this video, I'm going to show you how to use domain mapping on your WordPress multi-site so you can assign unique domains to any or all of the pages in your multi-site network. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more WordPress tutorials for you. I'm just curious, how many of you guys are using WordPress multi-site to sell sites to other people? Or how many are using it to just to build out client sites or build sites for yourselves? Or what are you using it for? Leave it down in the comments below. I'm just curious, no other reason. And with that out of the way, let's head over to the screen capture to learn about domain mapping. I'll see you there. I'm currently in the dashboard of the network admin. This is the super admin where you have the overview of all your sites. Currently, if I go to sites, I only have two of them. One is the main site, Origami Fold, and one is a subdomain called testing. Now for this subdomain, I mean, th this one already has its own unique URL, so you wouldn't need the domain mapping plugin for that. But this one here, testing.origamifold.com, we can have any domain name we want for that. So we could call this, maybe this is about, uh, I don't know, exams and tests. We could have yourstudytest.com and have that be the main domain name. And that's the goal that we're trying to achieve here. So what we have to do is go to plugins and then click on add new and find a plugin called WordPress MU Domain Mapping. And this is the plugin that we want right here. It's currently still compatible with WordPress, even though it says it was updated two years ago. If you go to the, the plugin's actual webpage, it says it was updated six months ago. So there's some discrepancy somewhere, but this is the one I use, so it works really well. I'm gonna click on install now, and then on network activate. And now we have our plugin installed right here. And if we go to settings, we now have domain mapping and domains. When we click on either of these, we're given some instructions, which are, please copy sunrise.php to the content folder. So this means we have to either log in through FTP or uh, go to our cPanel and log in through File Manager and get that file from the plugin folder and put it into this folder. We're gonna do that in just a second. And then after that, we have to put the sunrise definition into the wp-config file. So we gotta do those two things. So I'm just gonna quickly log into the file manager of my Bluehost account where this website exists. We're logged into the cPanel. I'm gonna just scroll down to find the file manager. And again, you can do this via FTP if you prefer that. That works just as well. And then we're gonna to navigate to the origami fold folder, which is where our multi-site is located. And what we have inside WP content and then plugins, we have our WordPress MU domain mapping uh, folder, which is the plugin folder. If we open that, we see a file called sunrise.php, which we need to move to just the WP content folder, like this, which we can confirm if we go back to here. It says put it into origami fold WP content. So that's where we're going to put it. Click on move file to move it there. Just going to confirm that it went to the right spot. And here it is, WP content is our folder. Here's sunrise.php, so that's fantastic. Now what we have to do is ensure the sunrise definition is in the origami fold WP config file. So I'm just gonna open the WP config file in the code editor. And above the very last require once command is where we put the sunrise code or the sunrise function. I'm just gonna copy this comment and write it in here so we know what this was. Uh, for so this is where it goes. And this is actually in the plugin or on the plugin page and even in the installation guide. If you go to plugins, and then I click on view details for the plugin. And then click on installation. It shows this information right here. And I've also put this code into the description down below. So you can just copy from there or go to where I just showed you and copy it from, from right here. 
And then we click on save to save that. And now if we refresh this page, it should clear up this notification here. And it does. It shows up here domain mapping database table created, which is fantastic. And now we can go ahead and fill in the rest of this and start mapping some domain names. So let's get to that right now. So what we have to do is either set the server IP address here or set the server CNAME domain. This IP address is just for reference. The plugin actually doesn't do anything with it, but having this IP in here allows the users, meaning the people that, or maybe if it's, if it's just you who creates the additional sites or if other people register and create sites, they will be able to use the IP they enter or you enter here to then change their A record in their domain name registrar to point to that subdomain and have that work correctly. CNAME is another option, same idea, just a different way of doing it. You choose one of the two. I usually do the IP address because I find it to be easier and faster. And it also doesn't hurt the uh, email. When, if someone's setting up a custom email for the, their domain name, maybe through the registrar or through a third party, using the A record with the IP doesn't affect their email in any way at any time. So that's the reason I usually choose the IP. So to find the IP, I find the easiest way is just to pop into my hosting account to find it. So I'm just gonna go back to my cPanel here. And on the left-hand side, we have a dedicated IP. And this should appear somewhere in your hosting account. No matter which host you have, if you have a hosting account, there is an IP address. So no matter which one you have, you're gonna find an IP somewhere. If you can't find it yourself, just hop on your host support system, either email or phone or chat, and they'll be quickly able to tell you what your IP address is. So I'm just gonna copy this one and put it into this field. And then following that, I'm gonna disallow remote login because that messes up the IP address forwarding sometimes. I'm gonna enable permanent redirect, which is better for your blogger's page rank or page rank of your own sites, if you're using multi-site just to create many of your own sites. The other two options are gonna leave how they are, and then click on save. So now the settings for the super admin are done. Now we have to go into each individual site and do the settings there to map each individual domain. So you don't map domains in the super admin, you do it in each individual site. So if we pop down to the testing site here, let's go to the dashboard. We see we change the URL to this subdomain, and now if we go to plugins, we are just gonna make sure the multi-site plugin is active and it is. And we hop over to tools and there's a domain mapping tool right here. And this is where we enter the domain name for the blog. So uh, before I do that, there's the IP address right down here, which you will recognize is the one that we just pulled from the hosting account. So it's right here. So when you enter that IP into the domain mapping plugin in the super admin, it doesn't actually do anything except for print it out here so that your site's users can use that IP to update their domain name DNS records. So if I pop into GoDaddy, so here's a list of my domains in my GoDaddy account. I'm just gonna click on Carl's footwork, click on the URL itself, because the domain names are URLs, and then click on DNS file zone. And then we have the A record at the very beginning. If we refer back to the site, it says, if you want to redirect a domain, you will need to add a DNS A record pointing to the IP address of the server, which is this one. So we're gonna copy this IP, pop back into here. It currently points to this one. I wanna change that. Yours may not point to anything. We wanna make sure we have at least one A record that points to the IP address that we're instructed to point it to. We add that in, click on save changes here. Gonna get a notice up here, it can take up to 48 hours for this to actually work, which is fantastic. But what we do is then copy the domain name itself. We paste that into here. And I'm gonna make it all lowercase, actually I'm just gonna retype it carlsfootwear.com. We check this box, which is primary domain for this blog. Then we click on add. And now we have the domain added. And now what we can do is we can actually switch back and forth if we wanted to. I don't know why you would, but currently once the DNS is propagated, right now this probably won't work because it was too soon. But once the DNS is prop propagated, which takes at most 48 hours, but usually 15 minutes or, or under two hours generally for sure. 
then we'll be able to access this domain name, which will take us to this blog. And then if you have other sites on your multi-site, you can just keep doing this. You can buy a domain name for every single sub-site on your multi-site. And the added benefit of that is nobody will know they're all on the same multi-site installation. It's kind of like WordPress, or it's exactly like WordPress.com, actually. They have 37 million plus websites. Each one of those can have their own domain name and nobody would ever know that they're all running out of the same database, which is a pretty cool feature. So like I said, once this propagates, this .com domain will refer to this website. So on the back end, when you log in, you will either see this or you will be logging in directly to Carl's, Carl's Footwear, which one doesn't really matter because you'll be in the same spot as the admin. But when a visitor is visiting the site, they will always be redirected to this domain even if they try to access this one, which they wouldn't even know about. They wouldn't know about this website. But either way, if they try to access this, they'll be redirected to here. So all your visitor traffic goes here. When you're in the admin, you might be on this one or this one. Doesn't really matter which, because they're both the exact same. And that's how we map domains in WordPress multi-site. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below the video. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more WordPress tutorials for you. And next up is clicking one of these videos on the right hand side to watch those or carry on in this WordPress multi-site playlist. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.